So what we are going to do today is we are going to look at it from a little bit of a higher level. So for example, um, when we have a, a mirror set up, and let's say I have a curved mirror, and then I'm going to assume that somehow I know where the focal point is. I mean, if you remember last uh, Tuesday's lecture, then you know, if this is radius of curvature, then the focal point should be here, right? Um, but whether you remember that or not, we'll just say, all right, here's my focal point. This is the focal distance f. And uh, I, so this is the starting point that I want to use. So this is for the mirror. And if we have lens, then it would be something similar, um, where if I have a con convex convex lens, that should be converging. Then, so last time we went through how, given the radius of curvature, um, so given some object somewhere where the image would form, I stumble through that somehow, I will change how I do it. Anyways, so for today, I want to say we simply know the focal length. Uh, maybe somebody else calculated it for me, or maybe I just measured it. H however the setup is, I simply know where the, what the focal length of this lens is. So that's what I mean by high level. I just want to start up from this knowledge that, um, that these two common optical elements Curve the mirror and lens has some focal point, and uh, we are going to use that as a starting place to do some basic, not basic, um, um, to do some geometric optics, uh, starting with the ray tracing. So I think in the way of introduction, the place I should start from is uh, ray tracing. So it's a way of analyzing um, how does this optical element affect a ray of light that's interacting with it. In, so in the case of mirror, it's reflecting from it. In the case of lens, it's going through it. So let's just imagine that we have a light source somewhere, or we have some kind of source of light. Who knows what it is? And this source of light, it's sending out light in all directions. So I'm not going to draw all those rays of light. I did it last time. but. There are two special rays that I want to look at that's going to interact with this mirror that I can actually say exactly what will happen with it without doing complicated calculation. One of those special rays is a ray of light that's coming from here, and it's going parallel to the axis. So for this ray of light, does anyone remember from what we covered on Tuesday, after reflecting from mirror, in what direction this should go? Yeah, towards the focal point and through it, right? So yeah, so this is one of those special rays where I don't really have to go through a whole law of reflection, all this stuff. This is the definition of focal point. If any light ray came in parallel to the axis, it's reasonably near, then after reflecting from it, it should go through the focal point. If it doesn't, then you did something wrong. <laughs> so that's one special ray. Uh, let me draw the second special ray with a different color. It's a special ray that reflects from this point, the vertex of the mirror. So, so yeah. So if uh, it's, uh, this ray is coming in this way, you kind of know this angle. That's the angle of um, incidence. And because this is a vertical surface, you can immediately see what the reflected angle would be. So after reflecting, it goes like, it reflects off as if it's uh, reflecting from a flat mirror, right? So those are the two special rays. And here's the reason we are paying attention to it. If I extend these rays out enough, then many times you will see that they eventually intersect. And where these rays intersect is where the image of this forms. So if you have, um, so I, usually we use arrows to indicate image. So if I have an arrow, 
that, uh, oh sorry, arrows as an object. So if I have this object, then if I'm standing here looking in the mirror, then this, um, the image of this would appear here. So as I look at the mirror, uh, what you are seeing is this image here. That's what you would see. And that's what you see when you look at this uh, giant curved uh, mirror. So the objects would be everything that's on this side of the room that you are seeing through the mirror. And where those objects appear to be would be somewhere around here, upside down, as you kind of see from this figure here. Good question? Yeah, so shouldn't be the size of the uh, object be smaller than the first one? Uh, it depends on where it is. So, so you, um, Samuel is uh, asking, shouldn't this image be smaller than this? Because that's kind of what you're used to seeing here, right? Yeah, so it depends on the distance. I will say, um, so we'll go over that actually in about 10 minutes. But if this is farther away, then yes, image will be smaller. But as this gets closer, up to the focal point, this image will get bigger and bigger. And something different will happen once this crosses the focal point. Okay. So I want you to draw this picture with a mirror, but um, I will tell you one thing. Uh, I'm going to stay as far away from mirror as possible. It's mainly because um, drawing diagrams with a mirror is painful. The rays overlap on top of each other. I keep erasing lines. So <laughs> whenever there's a problem dealing with the curved mirror, my preference is to rewrite the problem into an ver equivalent version that can be represented with the lens. So when you look at chapter two problem set, you will notice that I didn't give you a lot of mirror questions that are in the OpenStax University of Physics. It's because I hate those questions. And you know, if you want to work those out, the first thing you would do is you would rewrite it so that you have the lens version of the essentially same question. So, okay, so let me move on to lens and we'll do something similar to this for the lens. So I have focal point here. Um, and let's say I have my object, some kind of source of light that's over here. Then the first special ray that, that I drew uh, for mirror, so let's just try doing the same thing. So there's going to be a ray of, so there's many rays of light. Of those, I'm picking just the one that happens to be parallel to the uh, axis. And as this ray goes through the lens, it'll somehow refract as it goes through. And this is once again what I mean by high level. I'm not concerning myself with the details of refraction at each surface. I, the only fact I have to know is the, where the focal point is. So where does this ray go? Yeah, through the focal point. That is the definition of focal point. That if uh, any ray came in parallel, then they go through this point. Yeah. All right, so that's one special ray. Um, so looking at this again, I guess second special ray should go through the middle of the lens. And what do you think the lens version of what you saw here would be? As the second special ray goes through the middle of the lens, what happens to it? Yeah, straight through, nothing. So imagine this is, so here it's all vertical surface, so it's like a glass pane. When you are looking through glass, there could be a little bit of a displacement. But if the glass is very thin, there wouldn't be even that. So that's what's going on here. So this second special ray will go straight. Uh, am I drawing this right? All right. Um, so when you do proper ray tracing, uh, I recommend that you do it with a ruler and ruler straight edge. Um, so these are apparently uh, crossing here. So that's where the image of this forms. Um, so same thing as what we saw here before. If I had an um, object here, an arrow again, then, so I guess when I draw this image, this is really what I mean. If you imagine the doing this, um, drawing for every other point on this arrow, you will see that they all end up along this same vertical line. 
So, um, so I'm just not going through all that uh, tedious work, but sort of trusting that it'll happen and drawing this image, having verified only the tip. But if I, for example, if I pick uh, this point here and go through the ray tracing, then the focus should form somewhere here. But, okay, so that's uh, the quick introduction to ray tracing. There's, um, so uh, let me write down the names since uh, you might be, uh, be asked in those terms. These are what we call principal rays. These are the special rays that we happen to know how they bend as they go through the lens. Or we happen to know how they reflect as they reflect from mirror. Uh, there's, there are many other rays that go through the lens. For example, there's this ray. Um, there should be a ray that goes through this point of the lens because it's transparent, right? So if I have this ray that's going through this uh, point in the lens, Anybody know how this bends? It wouldn't bend up. It would bend downward. No. Yeah. Do you know any other point that this ray, after going through the lens, must go through? The corresponding point of the object. Yeah, this point. Because I know image forms here. And the fact that this is image means any ray that started here, went through the lens, has to go through that point. So now. The thing is, I couldn't have done this right from the beginning. Because before I drew these two rays, I didn't know where the image was. So that's the function of this principal ray. It helps you find the image. And once you have the image, then you can draw as many rays as you want to draw. Um, but you, know, you don't want to waste too much time doing that. Question? So what type of lens are we using? Like the focus or the lens? The one that you So this is a converging lens, right? As in, uh, when a ray comes in parallel, it bends towards the axis. And you are asking, how do we do it differently if it's a diverging lens? Is that yeah. the question? Yeah. Is yeah. It the same, like, if it's a convex lens? We will, when it, I, I don't want to say convex concave. I want to say converging and diverging. So when you say converging, is it concave? It, it's, it looks, uh, let me, sure, here's the reason I don't want to say, um, I don't want to say uh, concave and convex, at least the, not with the lenses. With the mirrors, you can. With the lenses, this is the reason I don't want to say that. And it's because uh, when you look at the, um, so these are all the different shapes of lens. Um, so this is what I drew. And if you want the exact opposite, you could have this. So convex, concave, or biconvex and biconcave. But the, the thing is, this is possible, and this is possible. All the three shapes of lens on the top are converging lenses, which means from this high level of view, they all behave the same way. All these are diverging lenses, but diverging lens could have a convex side. Um, so, so that's why I pr would prefer the phrase converging and diverging. And what I have drawn here is converging. And we'll go through the diverging lens as we go through the examples. Good. Yeah. yeah. So with the converging lens, um, so converging, it just means a ray that's coming in parallel. It bends towards the axis. So it must cross the axis at some point. And where it crosses the axis, that is the focal point. Good. So these two principal rays that I drew, they allow you to um, allow you to find the image. And once you find the image, then you can do other things like drawing this additional ray if you want you to draw it. Um, there is one more thing we can do before we move on. It, um, sometimes you will hear uh, references to three principal rays instead of the two that I just drew. Um, uh, I guess it might have come up in high school physics. Whatever. So if you are looking for a third principal ray, this is how you would do it. So I drew only one point as the focal point. And a lot of times when people draw lenses, you will actually see them mark two focal points. One um, at f distance on one side, and the other at the same distance on the other side. Right, did I? 
I might have not drawn it quite right. Let me, <laughs> I don't know, it's hard to do it without a straight edge. Does it look roughly the same distance? Roughly, uh, close enough. Okay, so the third principal ray, which you, you know, if you want to draw it, you can. It looks like this. It, uh, the ray comes from this point. It's the ray that goes through the focal point on the other side. Uh, the, I don't know if there's a name for it. Second focal point goes through here. And at some point, it'll hit the lens, hopefully. <laughs> and when it, as it goes through the lens, how do you think this ray should bend intuitively? Goes out parallel, you mean? Or, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Goes out so that it's parallel to the axis. And when you draw this all properly with the rulers and whatnot, you will see that it goes through the same point here. So it's a redundant, um, it's unnecessary. That's why when I draw ray tracing, I usually don't draw this one, especially when I'm doing freehand without any straight edge, because I'm afraid that it won't come to the same point. Um, so, um, so, but this is the third principal ray. If you needed to draw it somehow, then it would be the ray that goes through the, uh, the focal point here. 